so I'm making this video because once again I've relapsed and it was because of depression I was on day four of no fab I started feeling depressed and it was half because of the withdrawal effects of porn itself from my four day from relapsing four days ago and it wouldn't have been there if I if I had gone gone over a week so I could have just plowed through it but when you stay up all night uh, especially on a weekend it can get to you because not only does it make the feelings seem worse and for me between day four and days four and days six basically the first week that they're, they're just it's just hell like it's just absolute hell because all that's going through my brain is porn and I just can't focus on anything in front of me. It's porn and like um I can't even look at women in real life. It's just porn and it's just not fun. It's just not fun going back to it where where I fail in the moment to associate my social anxiety and my depression and all of these other negative things and negative emotions that I feel with being withdrawal effects. And until I can just, I'll never be able to make that connection unless I'm like aware of my thoughts before I even think them. So until I can get to that level of self-awareness, uh, I'm I'm not going to uh, be going anywhere because I need to be aware of it and to do that as soon as I feel it as soon as I feel it it's gonna be like a pinch and this is why having cold showers is so good for you because it trains you for that pinch um once you feel the pinch you uh you go and do something else and it's already taken you out of your comfort zone um and i've been i've been making excuses for myself not to go for walks and not to go and socialize like oh i'll wait until day seven well what if day seven never comes because it hasn't came for like a month now what if it never comes? What if I never get to day seven? Or what do I have then? I just have a stained, stained pair of underwear and a mass of depressive thoughts. Um, I'm not going to be remembered for the relapses that I do. And I'm not going to be memorable from the relapses. Because I won't be able to really express myself in, in its truest form. When after I relapse, the withdrawal symptoms make me self-hate. And I'm not going to feel it now. Like now I'm going to feel very, very, very calm. And, and sleepy and lethargic and basically lazy. And... I might have like a bit of clarity, but tomorrow and the day after that and the day after that and the whole week of time is just going to be taken off of me now. And I've got to admit that it's my fault. I'm sorry. And I've got to take the responsibility for this because no one can really make me relapse except from myself because... If you think about it, if I've been rejected in the past and that's something that's really gone to me, like even though I can't visualise the rejection, I just still feel it. And like, really, no one can make me relapse except from myself because I may blame other people for making me feel this way, but what I've basically done is I've internalised it 
internalize my feelings, internalize this anger for being an introvert, for, which is stupid really because it doesn't affect anything. Being an introvert, well, why don't I go outside? <laughs> Oh, we'll wait until day seven and I'm way more outgoing than doesn't it's an energy boost, but for God's sake. But uh being an introvert, um feeling as though I'm not as intelligent as other people. Uh and another big belief, a massive limiting bias, uh limiting belief is that I I'm not worthy of love and I'm going to come out. I'm a virgin. It's harder for virgins on this journey. It really is. Like I've had relationships online, but uh, like I'm, I'm trying to be better. I'm reading red pill content and whatnot, but it just seems to like get to you when you you just um you've never experienced that so you kind of pedestalize women and it's evident in the genres that I watch today actually where I watched I watched uh, cuckold fetishes and I experimented with techniques and also was watching a lot of BDSM fandom and it basically trains men to be submissive to women. So if you want a relationship with a woman, uh, the best place to start is by binge watching all of that stuff, obviously. Like it, it's gonna it's gonna make you feel inadequate um around them. Like not only are you not going to be able to look them in the eye because you've been masturbating over them, uh and you feel as though you have something to hide. And in my case, you have to hide your whole personality. You have to hide your whole identity. But um, you, you're going to... You're going to feel like... Um, like you're not cut out to speak to them. You're not... You're not, you're not able to... Inadequate around them and boring, uninteresting. The only way to deal with that is to overcome what has set those seeds in place in the first place. Like you've got to uproot the whole thing. You can't just uh, leave it be because it's just gonna lead to more destruction in the long run. It's just gonna keep branching off and on those branches, it, the, the fruits of its labour are um, depression, anxiety, OCD, ADHD, like all of those things uh, grow, grow from it. Um, like not the illnesses themselves, but that you feel like you may have them. And the more outlandish beliefs of what PMO leads to, I have been neglecting and regret, uh, rejecting. And I don't want to bring a woman into this frame. I don't want to bring a woman into this frame when my PMO habits could really hurt the relationship and make it so that it's basically unbearable for both people. And... Going off at the top of my head, this has been the case with a, a girlfriend online who I used to see, and she lived a far, far, far away. And the whole relationship was basically based off of convenience. Like, I would flatter her, and she would, uh, in return, pretend to have sex with me um, and I would jerk off over it obviously and you end up getting into like these relationships of convenience I suppose 
where you you want to talk to women uh, you want to talk to them just because they're there and they can give you what you desire what you crave and you basically i don't think you have standards because the woman who i was speaking to the girl who i was speaking to was an absolute psychopath like um <laughs> She was like someone who who you'd see on Tumblr, and basically she was moping all the time about how inadequate and inferior she was, and she had a porn addiction as well because it can affect women like that. And basically, I saw that she had depression and whatnot, and I was like, "Oh, I'm here for you." and feeling bad as well and to relate in the feelings to feeling bad we we can both mutually feel bad uh we can both mutually feel bad and that's not how a relationship works that's not a positive relationship if you're basing it off of negative emotions because um well if you leave an emotional impact if you leave an emotional impact uh then yes, the, the relationship will work, but you're basically not when you're taken from the other person. And if you're feeding off of those negative emotions instead of counteracting them with positive emotions, uh, you, you're basically leading to um, a disaster of a relationship. And all I had was negative emotions. All I had was the PMO. And this was an alternative. And even though I went two weeks without masturbating before meeting her and then fapping and then going a week, because it's a very short time, um, it basically, it was just like a supplement. And I think you've got to be aware of these supp supplements for PMO. Like my supplements were... Um, the internet, YouTube, and another one of my supplements was, uh, no one of my supplements is personality tests, online tests, and scrolling through and thinking, God, I wish I was this person or that person, and it, it, that that's also a bad idea because you can't, I don't think you can be anyone else other than yourself and like I think acceptance which uh, you can build through like stoicism and just having like good mindfulness habits which I've sort of fallen off on you can uh, accept who you are and work with what you've got and get greater Gain greater control over your life. Um, and it's a much better alternative than trying to feign. Feign being someone that you're not. And when you feign being someone that you're not, you're going to get these uh, memories and past, like, oh my God, that was so stupid. And then you try and escape from it from, with PMO. And PMO is not going to comfort you. PMO is not your dad. It's not PMO's job to do that. PMO uh, just gives you, like, pleasure. It's just like a... I mean, it, it's like... Um, it fills a hole. You can use it to fill a hole. And it, it was just designed initially for pleasure, but people, because it was convenient, like how my relationship was convenient with my ex, they just take it, they fill a hole... For their sexless lives or the fact that they don't want to improve on themselves. It's too hard. They've got all these traumas from the past. And uh, they, they basically let them multiply in the mind. Until it spills out. And that person reaches bottom. And then they end up making... YouTube channel about it.